Hi, my name is Edwin. My ham radio call sign is KC3JBY. I'm 12. I'm in sixth grade. My science teacher, Miss Buckingham, asked me to make a short video about ham radio. For this video, I'm going to tell you what I've done in the past year with ham radio and what I would like to do in the upcoming year. <coughs> first you need permission first you need to get permission from the FCC that's the Federal Communications Commission to transmit on ham radio frequencies I was 10 when I passed the test but I actually turned 11 before I was allowed to transmit I'm one of 800,000 people in this country who is a ham that's about a quarter of one percent of the population in this country. This is a picture of me holding uh, my certificate of successful exam completion after uh, my exam last spring. Here is a... So I wanted to tell you what I've done in the past year. The first thing you usually do when you're a brand new ham is is to buy an HT. It, it just looks like a little walkie talkie. Hams can use them to talk to other hams nearby. Maybe from one radio directly to a few, maybe a few miles away. This is what happens when you're just talking from one radio directly to another radio. It works like a walkie talkie. Here's a diagram to explain what happens when two people talk directly to each other. The hams find, often find other hams using repeaters. Nothing looks different when you're using an HT on a repeater. You know, what's happening is really exciting. When two people are inside the range of the repeater, they can talk even if their circles don't overlap. You transmit. Here is a photo of a typical view from a repeater antenna and a diagram that explains how it works. You transmit on one frequency and you reach a tower with a more powerful radio than that other radio, which is usually high in the air, retransmits your signal so other hams can hear you. And this needs to be done using two different frequencies or else you'll get a horrible feedback you would just squeak. Here, let me show you what feedback sounds like using two computers instead of radios. But it's really the same. This is me when I was little. feedback. Sound was coming out of my computer and going into my dad's computer. It happened so fast that it was just building up. This happens much more quickly over the radio so you just get a squeak. Another thing I've done as a ham this year is use something called echo link. This allows hands all over the world to talk to each other through the internet and the radio at the same time. So I talked to Tetsuo JG6DEA from Japan a few times while I was on the K3JMR repeater. I was using my radio. He was on the internet talking to me. I've also talked to my grandpa on Echolink. Here is a small picture of my family tree. One of my brothers is a ham. My mom and dad are hams. And my grandpa is a ham.
my little brother isn't a ham yet, but he can talk uh, using something called third party traffic. He has is to have one of us act as the control operator and we can allow him to talk as long as he comments as long as his comments are just personal or about ham radio you can't run businesses over ham radio it has to be used only for fun and learning or for emergencies or community service this is the kit I made in January. This is called the cricket. It's on 80 meters. I used it to communicate with my grandpa using Morse code. Morse code is a digital Morse code is a sequence of beeps that allows you to communicate. It's a form of it's a digital form of communication. Other digital forms of communication require the use of a computer. You can download the software for free and hook it up into your radio. If you have some cables and antennas, my dad and I have played with this software a bit. It's fun. And in June each year, there is something <coughs> called Field Day where hams take their equipment outside and put on a big show for everyone to come see. It helps hams get ready in case of disasters, but it's mostly to show off to the public. Hams collect in parks and other public places and run their radios off of batteries and generators. Each station has to try to make contact with as many other stations as possible. It's the biggest ham event each year. And last year we went to Rock Creek Park with a few friends for field day. There are many things I'm looking forward to do with ham radio that I haven't done yet. In a couple weeks I'll be attending hamvention this is a huge ham radio convention last year almost 30,000 people showed up there are people who go every single year this will be my first time i hope to meet other hams hams who are kids other than my brother i haven't met any other I haven't met at many other hams or kids also within the next year I hope to earn my general class license I hope I can make more radio kits too whenever the cell phone whenever the cell phone towers are hit by hurricanes or tornadoes Hams are the first ones to get their communications back up and running. So this is why hams are so important in emergencies. Ham radio is fun and ham radio is a fun and exciting hobby and it's very useful in emergencies. I hope you will consider learning more about it. If you have any questions, just ask me. Thanks for listening to my video. This is Edwin73's KC3JBY Clear.